Hello world, this is Lockpicking Dev. Today I want to show you a new type of cutaway that I made um, to demonstrate the binding pin principle. It's easy to make. All you do is where the black lines are on the one on the left, you uh, file down that little piece right there and cut this whole side off, which is super easy to do with any sort of saw by hand. Just go from the side, cut that piece off, and then file that little, that little nub of boarding down. Our result is this right here. Then all you have to do is drill a hole in the body. What I did was drill two holes and then finish it off with the Dremel. I'll do talk more about that in a second, but here's the result. And it's super easy to show the binding pin principle with this lock because you don't have to go through the warding and the learner can actually see all the pins at once. So you can see, okay, springy, springy, leave it alone. Go through, okay. That one's a little bit. There we go, pick that one. I know this one is next, so you do that one. Springy, springy. You can see how easy it shows the, the pins and which ones are binding or not as you're going through. There we go, and this should be our last pin right here. It's hard to, there we go. Do it on camera while I'm holding it all at the same time. But yeah, there we go. So it can show the binding pin principle. And uh, from the below, without having to go through the warding and show all the pins at once. So super, super useful. Uh, a couple of things to note about it for when you make it. This um, little bolt right here, I had to drill and tap a hole. I recommend doing a little bit smaller hole and a little bit thinner slot right there. But that, that right there is to prevent this from overturning and dropping the driver pins into this uh, hole area right here. With that, uh, the reason why I say um, drill the area a little bit smaller, also one, one thing I'd recommend doing is drill it. I didn't pay attention to this, so this was a lesson learned. You can see how this pin's exposed when I turn it this way so that pin can fall out, and that has already happened to me. So drill it the minimum amount you need to, so you can see that I didn't need to make it that wide right there. Drill it the minimum amount and make it to where it's offset from the pin so your pins won't fall out if your lock turns this way. To drill, um, the hole through the body here. First, again, this was easy. This was a saw. Take a saw it off on the side and um, file down that little piece right there. On this part right here, all I did was take a drill and I drilled two holes and then I took a Dremel and did the rest of this. Brass is pretty soft and easy to go through. Same with the Dremel right here. And the type of bit that I used was this type of Dremel bit. Just like a burr bit, it's all metal, so really you don't need any sort of sanding bit. Um, a sanding bit works fine, but I would say you're wasting your sand on that. So yeah, I did the, the drill bit on side right here. This one is a little thick. You need something way thinner right here for sure. And I took some 220 sand, uh, grit paper to kind of smooth it out. An improvement that could be made is you can make it into a full cutaway. That way when it's um, picked and turned, you can actually still see the um, there we go. You would be able to see the driver pins above and the key pins below. That would be super helpful. Um, I think one other thing that would be just a little bit helpful is on the um, the plug right here is on this other side, drill or mill out just a little bit of a rounded uh, window right there. That way when it's fully turned like this, when it's picked anyway and fully turned, you can see the pins just a little bit better right there. But yeah, those are my only uh, suggestions for improvements. A mortise uh, cylinder would be way easier to hold. It's a little bit more brass to kind of uh, mill away. So that'd be a little bit more difficult, but these kick cylinders make it super easy. And, um, oh, one last thing to note as well is notice how I, when I drill it, I left some brass on the end right here and the front. You don't want that too thin because the body can start to warp. And it's super important to have brass on the end. That way when you put your key in, it holds the tip of the key right there that way your key doesn't jiggle back and forth. Otherwise the key will quite literally just fall straight out of the, um, the plug there. Anyways, this was a uh, new cutaway I just discovered. It's super easy to do on SC1 keyways and it is super really useful to show that binding print principle. All right, everyone, thanks for watching.